five o'clock on Wednesday, and it's time for Craig and Madden's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Madden. Welcome back to another review show. We have a bumper review show this week because we are looking at five magic products, five brand new magic products. We've got stuff by Vulpine, we've got stuff by Penguin, uh, we've got stuff by a whole bunch of different people. It's a really good show this week. There's some great tricks. So uh, remember, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to his channel. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram, but forget about all of that self-promotion. We're going to get straight into the review show uh, with the first trick by Adam Wilbur, Volpine Creations. Let's do this. So first up, we have the What, Where, When and Why wallets uh, by Adam Wilbur and Volpine uh, Creations. And uh, th this is this is really cool packet trick. Like This is one of my favourite packet tricks that I've seen in a long time. I remember when I interviewed Adam months ago. He showed me this, and I remember him telling me that him and Justin Miller kind of uh, workshopped this together. Well, he's finally bought it out. So the first thing that I want to tell you is the props are really good. So uh, it comes with, uh, with, a, with a really nicely made wallet, doesn't it, right? Yeah. And inside, you've got specially printed cards. You've got everything that you need to do the routine with. And the tutorial is exceptional. I'm going to get to the tutorial in a minute. Just for people who don't know what this is and you have got no idea of what, uh, what the trick's all about, I'm going to show you a performance of the routine. So I'm going to do a performance of the main routine because there is a really cool bonus routine. I'm going to show you a performance of the main routine and then we'll talk about uh, what's so good about it. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to, uh, I've got a little wallet here. Yeah, There's an envelope yeah. inside the wallet. Now, I would normally have a £20 note in here, but you spent it. But if you get this right, you're going to win £20. Okay, that'd be pretty cool. You like money, don't you? So uh, we've got wallet and we've got some, uh, we've got an envelope. We'll get back to the envelope. The envelope's fairly important. And as well as that, we've got these playing cards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there's four cards here. It doesn't really uh, matter what the cards are, uh, but yeah, it, there's four of them and you need, to, uh, you need to name one of them out loud. When I snap my fingers, you're going to name one of these cards out loud. Okay. And depending on which card you name, you might win the game. You might lose the game. Uh, it might just lead to more questions. We don't know. Okay, so there's two sevens, two queens. Which one do you want? Seven of hearts. Are you sure? Yes. You don't want to have any of the other three? No. Okay, because sometimes people would go for one of these three cards, but you didn't. You went for the uh, the seven, correct? Mm -hmm. And that was a free choice. Unfortunately, Ryland, you didn't win. But it did bring a whole bunch of questions. Do you want to know some of the questions? What? Well, the first question is, um, well, well, where did all of the... Where did all the, uh, the faces and the backs of the cards go? The next question is, when did they disappear? The next question is, what the heck happened? And the next question is, why has everything suddenly just disappeared? Where are all the cards? Well, you named the Seven of Hearts, didn't you? Yeah. And the Seven of Hearts holds, holds all the answers. Because you see, on here it says, look in the wallet. And the reason it says, look in the wallet, do you remember that little envelope that's been here the whole time? Yeah. Inside this envelope is one card, the card you named, the Seven of Hearts. But it could be. Well, you know what? Uh, you got to see a really cool trick, but you didn't get the £20. But you got a really cool trick, so I think that's worth mm -hmm. even more than £20. So, what do you think of that, Ryan? I think, I think it's very good. It's really good, isn't it? It looks a bit hard, though. No, it's easy. it is. You know what? It's completely and totally... I don't want to say it's completely and totally self-working. That would be a lie. Um, during the card section, during the bit with the packet trick, there's a little bit of sleight of hand, but nothing difficult at all. Like, it's not anything that's hard. You know, it's a frustration count and something else. Uh, very, very easy to do. Uh, the tutorial is exceptional. One thing that I really love about Adam Wilbur and I really love about Volpine Creations is the amount of effort that they go into, into the tutorial. So everything's broke down into individual videos. First of all, you've got a studio performance. Um, then you've got a live performance. Then you've got, you know, first of all, he talks about the project and what you get. Then he talks about how to do the routine. He breaks it all down. It's all very clear. Adam is an incredible teacher and he leaves no stone unturned. You compare that to some of the other stuff that comes out these days, which has got like a four minute download with music over the top and subtitles. 
that's why I love routines like this so much, because Adam goes into everything. He goes into audience management. He goes into angles. He goes into absolutely everything. He, he doesn't just pay lip service to the product. And that makes me believe that he's done this a million times because he knows everything about this project inside out. Um, but it is very, very easy. There's a bonus routine as well, which is very, very good. The bonus routine is probably just as good as the trick itself. In yeah. fact, I think some people would say that the bonus routine is even better. Um, but I love this. I, but, but yeah, to answer your question, it's very easy to do. Yeah. You got any other questions? Um, is, could this be done on stage? No, no, definitely. It's more of a close-up trick. Parlour? Uh, par parlour it probably could use. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about this is an interesting hook. Whenever no angle you're... issues either. No angle issues. You don't even need a table. I know I use the table because we've got one in front of us. And in the performance, Adam's using so the table. You could do it in walk around. Yeah, you just put the wallet down on somebody's hand or you put the wallet down in between their hands and you do the packet trick thing and then you come back to the wallet. Absolutely. And the hook about this is great. Two things I like about this. First of all, the hook. Whenever you do something involving money, people are interested. Uh, but secondly, I love that visual moment that like they think they know exactly what's going on and then he goes well i've got some questions for you you know what's going on where have the cards gone what why, why have they disappeared um and because of how the routine set up it's slightly different every single time uh which is really cool adam says it keeps you on his toes and it really does um yeah so it's really easy uh no angle issues no table required it's a pretty much an instant reset uh, Adam talks. Uh, you just gonna put some cards away. Yeah, you're just gonna put the cards back away in the in the uh, in the wallet. Depending on how you put them away, you might need to just do a slight adjustment to the packet, which takes like three seconds. Uh, I've discovered that as I put the cards away, I can do one half pass and I'm totally reset. So it completely resets for me instantly. It takes up very little pocket space. It just it's completely self-contained. It's just in there, <coughs> and you're ready to go again. You know it's. Um, a different outcome every time because they can name a different card every time um and yeah it's, there's nothing to not like about this I, I posted on instagram that i was learning this and i had a few people comment on the instagram post and they said oh this is one of my favorite packet tricks of the year and i have to agree this is really good because most packet tricks don't make any sense at all they're just there for the sake of it whilst this packet trick absolutely completely and totally makes sense and if you think about the magical moments in here they can think of any card that card ends up as the uh, card in the envelope in the wallet every single card disappears but rather than just appear it disappearing you've got this absolutely logical presentation of the questions being answered and then the last one where you turn their card over and it's like look in the wallet and then you go to the wallet and the card's in there it's just a really well logical thought out routine i really like it in fact i've got a gig later on haven't i like we're yeah. filming this uh, we're filming this now. I've got a gig that New I'm Year's leaving. Day. Yeah, it's New Year's Day. We're, we're filming about a week and a half ahead of time. Uh, and I'm going to be going to a gig uh, in about half an hour, aren't I? As soon as I've finished filming this, I'm going to a gig. I'm taking this with me. I'm going to go take this to the gig uh, because I think, this, I think this can work really well. So look for a review show revisited on this. But I'm going to give this 98%, right? I think this is exceptional. I really like this. What are you giving it? I'm going to give this 98% as well. 98% from me, 98% from Ryland. Well done. Let's move on to the next trick. Okay, so next up, we have the latex cube gimmick uh, by, uh, it says here, who's it by? Uh, Tenjnia or something like that. Uh, this is the, uh, the latex cube gimmick. Now, what this is... Um, this is basically, I, I have no problem showing you exactly what you get for this because they've been very open in the ad copy in the trailer as to what you get with this. You get a Nielsen style vanishing bottle gimmick, but made out of a Rubik's Cube. And to be honest, I'm, I'm really surprised no one has ever done this before. And, and this is what the gimmick looks like. So uh, what you have here, this is the gimmick. So it looks a little bit like a shell. Uh, but it's squidgy like a latex cube. Now, the nice thing about this is when it lies on the table, that really does look like a Rubik's Cube, doesn't it? Yeah. And the other thing is, it's very strong. So you can put, like, a collection of Rubik's Cubes on the top and um, it, it's not going to collapse in on itself because of how... Um, because of how it's made, which is really cool. You also get a regular Rubik's Cube with it as well, which is uh, a really nice speed cube um, that's, that's really well made as well. So that's what you get with the set. 
Now the downside to this is a very short tutorial. Because of the possibilities with this, I think this could be a lot longer. They could have gone through a lot of stuff that you can do with this, but it's literally about six minutes long. And it's, uh, you know, just done to music. I don't and... know if they mentioned, but you can actually do this with Cuban Bottle. You could instead do this. Instead of the... Well, well, don't give anything away. Yes, but yeah. Instead, instead of the of... main gimmick. Instead of that gimmick, you can use this. Gimmick. You can use this, which would make it completely angle-proof. Yes. Which is, uh, which is very handy. So yeah, if you haven't thought about that, you can actually use this with Cuban Bottle. Now, Ryan's been playing around with this, naturally, because it's a cube thing. Uh, I was worried he wouldn't be able to do this, because part of the methodology behind this is to squidge this thing down and, uh, and and palm it or hold it secretly in your hand. Um, but he doesn't have a problem with that. And uh, Yeah. yeah. The, um, the well, should we show them the performance? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to show... Uh, that they've got I've got a, another downside, but I'll tell you. Well, should we do the performance yeah. first of all? So, Ryan's been playing around with the behind-the-back solve using a... Uh, now, you can do a behind-the-back solve with the cube when you mix it, but the advantage of this... Is they can mix it. They can mix it. They can mix it. So uh, let's but get right. You can do um, uh, one of the, oh, I forgot what it's called. Um, the one where you, two, two, one, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, just like a one second solve or a, yeah. yeah. So you can do you that. You can do that one. Like a cube three mix. Yeah, you could do that without anything, normal cube. But it, this is the advantage of they're allowed to use it. Yeah, 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 because they're they, they, they can, they can, they mix can it up. examine the cube and mix it. Exactly. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to get Ryan to quickly perform that for you so you get an idea of exactly how it looks. I've got a Rubik's Cube here. Now, I'm going to get my dad to mix this up. Okay. Look at that. Caught it with my left hand. How impressive is that? Well, I am left-handed, so that's easy. Yeah, well, I'm right-handed, so that's impressive for me. There you go. Always oh, got it. <laughs> with my right hand. Touch there. Now, let me mix it up a bit more. I'm going to put this behind my back and I'm going to solve it in less than five seconds. Okay. okay. Less than five seconds. When you say go, I'll go. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Go. No way. Now, that's the behind the back solve. The other thing that's quite. I've got one downside. Okay, what's that? Oh, I forgot I was going to say that. Um. Oh yeah, um, you know the cube it comes with? Yeah. Um, well, you just talk for a minute and I'll just, I just need to get the orange side all together. You need to get the orange side all together? Yeah. Okay. Well, what I was going to say is one thing that I, I think could work really well with this, and it is mentioned on the tutorial, is have this folded up and palmed like this. And have a brown bag, you know, like a brown paper bag, uh, with a regular Rubik's Cube in it that's mixed. So you bring out this brown bag, you've got this palm behind the brown bag, and you can actually give the bag out to the audience and tell them to reach in and take out the cube. You then take the brown bag back, and then you take the you ask them to drop the cube in the bag. You can turn the bag towards the audience to show that the cube's in there, and then you put your hand into here, and as you do to take the cube out to show them one more time, you leave the shell in there because it was just squinched in your hand. It'll naturally open up like that, and then when you put the cube yeah. back inside, so when you put the cube back inside, you can very easily, inside the bag with one hand, just put it into the, uh, into the, uh, the shell. And then when you snap your fingers and tip, the, uh, tip it out, you've now got a solved cube, um, which, is, which is very cool. But anyway, yes, what were, you, what were you going to say? Sorry. Uh, there is a downside. Yes. Now, I only just have the orange side, but the orange don't match. So when it's solved, say, they're like, going to look at the orange and just... <coughs> I don't think it's too much of a problem, but that looks more pink than orange. It does, actually, yeah. I've not noticed that, actually, but you're right. That's more pink than orange. And the other thing to consider uh, is once the shell is inside here, it's not very easy to get out. When you think I've, about... I figured out a way to get it out. Yeah, but you couldn't do that in front of the audience. Like, with a Henry Harrier shell, for example, it just drops out like butter. Yeah. So you can literally, for example, with a Henry Harrier shell, you can be holding it like this. And let's say you're using a cabaret table, you can literally just hold this just slightly above the cabaret table and let, let it drop in, or you can do a million things with it. This is a little bit more trickier to get off, you know? Yeah. So that, that's... Probably some... because it's rubber. Yeah, well, yeah, I, mean, I know the reason, but it's, it's worth pointing out. But here's the thing. This is what it is. It is a really... I know you can palm it. I've seen you I palm it. I'm just going to fold it into like a flatten it and then fold it into like a 
water. Yeah, and then and then you got it there. That's not too yeah, much of a so problem. Yeah, so nothing behind me. And then when I put my hands behind there, I can just put secretly put it in and then come out. And it's yeah, like, I mean, if you want to do a, a cube solving trick in your act and you don't want to learn to solve a Rubik's Cube or learn any of the Cube 3 stuff, this is great. Look, the bottom line is you can see exactly what it is. They've been very open and honest as to what it is. Um, understand that when you watch the tutorial you're not going to get much from it at all it's very very basic but if you can think of an idea that you can use this for then absolutely go for it I know that you've got a couple of ideas that you want to use this for that you're yeah. practicing at the moment so for you this is probably great for somebody yeah. uh, like for me I'm never going to use that in my act ever there's no reason for me to use it in my act because I don't need to use it. I don't want to replicate Ew. anything I do with that. What about this... Cuban Bottle? Well, no, because I do Cuban Bottle all the time and I don't need to use uh, an, another gimmick. In fact, I don't even use the gimmick that Henry provides with it, as you know. So I, don't, I definitely don't need to add a gimmick to it. So I'm going to give this... Uh, okay, stop playing with me now. I'm going to give this... I'll just put it away. Will you stop messing? <laughs> oh, you're so annoying. I'm going to give this 80%. Uh, it's good. It's just I'm not going to do it. Uh, but that does not mean it's not a well-made prop. It's a well-made well prop with a terrible tutorial. But if you can come up with an idea for it, then go for it. I'm giving you 80%. What about you? I'm giving this 119. 119%. You want this to be Trick of the Week. There's yes. no chance I am saying that this is Trick of the Week because I know what's coming up. Uh, but uh, but it, if you want it to be your Trick of the Week, that's fine. It's my Trick of the Week. It's his <laughs> Trick of the Week. It's not my Trick of the Week. It's 80% from me. It's 119% from Ryder. Okay, so next up we have Black Cross. That's Black Cross uh, by Michael Chatelain, and it says on the front of this, super visual, super clean, super amazing Black Cross. Now what this is, basically, the concept behind this is that you get a gimmicked card. You actually get two gimmicked cards uh, that, you, that you put into a regular deck of cards that's not provided. And once you've put those two, uh, two gimmicks into the deck, it allows you to have somebody freely pick a card, have them sign it, and uh, and have them um, uh, have them sign it, lose it into the deck, then take another card, draw an X on it, visually make that X disappear, and when it disappears, you spread through, you go through to the card that they signed, and it's got an X on the back of it. Now that's how the original routine worked, and I've changed it a little bit, and I'll show you the performance of it in a second. I'll tell you why I've changed it. Before I tell you why I changed it, you and I both agree that this is so much, is really good. First of all, we really like this, don't we? It's way better than the Nicholas Lawrence trick. Yeah, last week we reviewed a Nicholas Lawrence trick. Which, where, they, the, where the X's just joined each other. Where the X's just I, joined each other. I, you said it was okay. I, I, I don't like the gimmick, that's all I said. Yeah, it, you can see I the like, gimmick. I like can, the actual trick and everything but the gimmick. That's yeah, well with this, I like the trick and I like the gimmick. Yeah. The gimmick on this is incredible. The gimmick card allows you to draw you can do an X. A snap or yeah, a flip. You, yeah, it allows. You're not good at the flip. You no, know, I prefer the snap anyway. You put the X on there and you snap your fingers, or and and the X just disappears, and it is super visual. Now let me explain the one issue I've got with it, and then I'll tell you how I changed it. I'll do a performance of how I changed it, just for anyone who's got this. <coughs> My issue with this is you've got two gimmick cards, and one of the gimmicks uh, gimmick cards. What it is, is it's, uh, without giving too much away on everything that's going on, one of the gimmick cards is a sticky card. So when they pick a card, you stick it to this gimmick card, which is lost in the deck. You then do the routine so that when the X disappears, it appears on their signed card, but their signed card can uh, with an X on the back because it's stuck to the gimmick. The problem is that card cannot be examined at that point because you've got two cards stuck together. And my problem with this particular routine when I watched the tutorial is I thought that's going to be a little bit problematic because they're going to want to look at that signed card and there's, they, as soon as they pick it up and look at it, they'll realise it's two cards stuck together. And because of how good the trick looks, you ultimately end up having to, they're going to want to examine that card and they can't. Now, the way I've got around this is by using, and I, I don't mind telling you this because it's different to what, uh, to what Michael's doing, I'm using a double backer and I've pre-drawn a cross on the card box. So I'm adding an extra phase, but what I'm doing is I'm having a card picked, having it signed, lost in the pack. Then I'm doing Michael's routine where I've put an X on another card, flick it over, spread through, show there's an X on a card, do a double turnover, 
and it's their card, it's their signed card, but because of the double backer, it's not, which then allows me to take their signed card and visually put the X on the card box, and they can examine the card box, they examine the card, everything's now examinable except for one gimmick card, which they've forgotten about because the X has jumped from that queen onto their signed card and then onto the card box, and that's what they're going to want to examine. Hopefully that makes sense to anyone who's got this. I think from a methodology point of view, it makes more sense because then they can examine their card. You can even give them their card if they want to. Let me do a performance of that and you'll see exactly what I mean. Right, I'm going to show you a trick with a pack of playing cards, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to grab the deck out and we will put the cards over there. We're going to get back to them in a minute, all right? Yeah. So we've got all these cards and uh, it's important that you can see that they're all there. They're all different, okay? Yeah. You can have any, look, you've already got a card sign there. We're going to use that one. You can have any card you want to, though. Take a card. That one there? Yes. Very good. Uh, take the pen, and you're going to write your name on the card. If you can, please, that would be good. Don't let me see the card, obviously, but write your name on there. And when you've done that, just show it to the camera so that um, the camera can see what your card is. And when we're done, we're done. Here we go. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Can the camera see that, sir? Good stuff. So you're going to put the card back in the deck, right? So just say stop. Stop. There? Yeah. Okay, we'll cut there. Can you put the card back down for me? And I'm going to leave it down in the middle. I can't get fairer than that, right? Now, whatever card you cut to, we'll use the Queen of Clubs. Are you happy with that one? Yeah. You take the lid of the pen. All I'm going to do is just draw an X right there. And you should be able to see it. Can you see the X? Yeah. Now watch this. I'm going to put the deck here. Don't push the table. We just knocked it a bit, but that's fine. Watch the X. One, two, three. Did you see that? Check that out. It vanished. That X disappeared. How cool is that? That's cool. But it has to go somewhere. And if I go through here, you're going to see. Check this out. Now, hopefully, there'll be one card in here with a cross on. One card and one card only right here with a cross on and i'm hoping that we made we found your card using that cross the the cross jumped from the queen onto one card and one card only the ace of spades was that your card with a little rye on it yeah. the only problem is this wrecks the deck because now we've got this ace of spades and um it's got a cross on it and we don't want that because then when you're spreading the cards out face down you know what the ace of spades is so i'll tell you what i'll do i'll take the the card box yeah mm -hmm. and i'll just do this and snap, and when I do, I can move the X off the Ace of Spades onto, onto the card box, and that's the trick. Pretty cool, yeah? Yeah. So that's the routine. Uh, I really like this. Like the, the, the gimmick card is really well made. Not only is it really well made, but when you do this, they're not gonna see anything, are they? Like the gimmick card, you could literally be staring at it, and you saw it and you were like, I have no idea how that X is disappearing. Like it looked, you knew that it was gimmicked in some way, but you didn't know how. You were like, how do you activate it? Whilst with the Nicholas Lawrence thing, we looked at it and you were immediately like, oh, I see what's going on there. I can see where the other X's are. With this, you can't. It's very well made. So you can have this. It hides behind part of it. Yeah, it hides perfectly. It's so well made. I'm really glad Nicholas Lawrence, uh, not Nicholas Lawrence. I'm really glad Michael Chatelain is back on track because we looked at one of his tricks a little while ago, the thinnest deck, and it was terrible. Um, but this is exceptional. This is really good. And I love the fact that you've got this one gimmick card in the deck. Um, it's a pretty much an instant reset, and you're left with a regular deck as long as you just take, you can, you know, as long as you just take the gimmick card out. So you, at the end, you can go, let me just take out the jokers and we'll, we'll carry on with the routine. And you're left with a regular deck of cards that you can do with any other thing. This would make a great opener to a card set, in my opinion. I love this. Yeah, if you don't already have the jokers in there, you can just pretend you're taking out the... The jokers at the end of the routine. You yeah, just but take they're it. not actually the jokers. You're yeah, just they taking don't. it out too. Give it cards. Yeah, and you just put them away and then you're done. You know, it won't look... You don't actually have jokers in there in the first place. <coughs> exactly. So I'm going to give this... Because, nine... yeah, yeah, because if you do have jokers in there, they're going to say, well, what did he put back in his pocket? Exactly, there? exactly. So you want to take the jokers out beforehand. Yeah. I'm going to give this 90%. I really like this. I think this is really good. I'm going to give very this commercial. 99. 99%. It's very commercial. No table required. Examinable as long as you kind of think through how to examine it. It's not exact, the original version is not examinable, but if you do what I suggested, it is examinable. Uh, easy to do, 
virtually no skill, no table required, instant reset. It's it's all good. It's all good. Um, so yeah, 90% from me, 99% from Ryland. Exceptional. Now let's get on and look at one of my favorite magicians. He's got a new release, Dan Harlan. Let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so the next routine we've got is uh, Both Sides Against the Middle by Dan Harlan and produced by P3 Penguin Magic. Both Sides Against the Middle. Yeah. And this is, I, I'm a huge Dan Harlan fan. Like, Dan has been a big influence on my career. Anytime Dan releases something, I sit up and pay attention. And what we have here is a super crazy coincidence trick that's pretty much self-working. Yeah, uh... Uh, it's not because it's a trick that I like, but you you got the magnetic lock. Are you talking about the... Yeah, the box. The packaging. Like, yeah. There, and I just like the cards that they've done. How they've done that card thing. See, you're a big fan. Some magicians say, oh, I don't care about the packaging, just give me the trick. But you're a big fan of looking at the packaging, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is fair enough. Uh, Penguin always do amazing packaging. And yeah, yeah. This, is, this is really good. Um, so, if you don't know what this is, it's a crazy... Leo with the one with the X's, that was nice. He even, he said on the thing, on the, <laughs> on the tutorial, he said that this is a good packaging, magnetic lock. Yeah, it is. Leo. Yeah. Leo is, Leo's Nic the Nicholas Lawrence one, the, ter the terrible gimmick, good trick, good packaging. <laughs> Can we get on with reviewing Dan's yes. trick, please? Thank you. So this is uh, this is a coincidence trick that's uh, actually mind blowing when you actually think through what's going on here. If you actually think about it from a spectator or a layman's point of view, what's going on here is crazy. I have a feeling that there's going to be some magicians that watch uh, the performance. Uh, the watch what's going on and they might tr be able to realize what's going on but I really want you to watch the performance you're about to see and not think of this like a magician but instead I want you to think of this like a layman and think about the impact that this will have on your average layman because honestly this will baffle their brain I'm going to get Ryland to perform it let's have a look at a performance of uh, against the middle both sides both sides against the middle let's have a look at that I've got this pack of cards here. Okay. I'm going to open it up. Mm hmm And I'm going to give you the cards. Okay. I want you to shuffle them. Shuffle them. Make sure they're in no particular order. I've got, I've also got um, this um, little like paper thing saying the target, five of diamonds. Okay. The target for five of diamonds. Is it? Yes. Okay. I'm happy that they are in no particular Order. Okay. I'm I'm gonna give you the deck under the table and what I want you to do You want to put your hands under the table, yeah? Yeah, I want you to take the deck and mix it up. Mix it up under this isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, but okay. And then take any card out, turn it over so it's face up and put it back in the deck. Any card? Do any I put card. it back in the same place or a different no, place? Any place. Okay, that one there. And shuffle again? Yeah. No. Well, you can if you want to. Yes, I do, because I don't trust you. <laughs> okay, done that. And then bring it up. Yeah. Now, let's... Now, think about this. You... I haven't even touched these cards. All I did was give them to you. Yeah. And put them under the table to give them to you. Yeah. So, basically, all I did was give them to you. You shuffled them. You picked any card. You put it anywhere back. Yeah, that's fair. And you... Turn... You turned over... The five of diamonds. No way. That's incredible. I love that. But that's not all. I don't see how you can top that. You know the five of diamonds? There's some more writing on this. Is there? On the other side, there's an arrow. Okay. The arrow is the six of clubs. Pick any one of them. Any one of the two of them? Yeah. I want that one. That one. Okay, so I'll put that one back over here. Now, so we're going to see what this card is. Mm -hmm. Six of clubs. You got the six of clubs. That's, That's very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, so that was a really good performance, right? Really loved the performance. Now, uh, first of all, what you just saw there is pretty much self-working, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, it's for 90% of the routine, it's completely hands-off. You don't even need to touch the deck. Actually, 95. Yeah, 95%. It's just at the very end. You've got, to, 
You've got to touch it about two times. That's exactly. It. It's, so it's a very, very easy routine to do. But despite the fact that it's so easy, Dan Harlan spends half an hour talking about the routine. Um, and, and I think that's very important. And it, again, it's another example of one of the reasons why I give certain products a better review. It's because I get an insight into what the trick's about. I get an insight into uh, how the creator has thought through the trick. And, and Dan leaves no stone unturned. Uh, it's a very easy trick to do that he could probably explain in 10 seconds, but he spends half an hour explaining exactly what's going on. Now, um, you don't need to have the spectator hold the deck underneath the table. Um, he goes through how you can do it walk around and he goes through how you can actually have it uh, behind the spectator's back. So you can give the deck behind the spectator's back and get them hold it behind their back. He does say it's best under the table. You don't need to be sitting down. Um, you can be doing it, st if you've got a bigger table, you can do it standing up. That's absolutely not a problem at all. But you do need to have the spectator take the deck out of play in order for this to work so that it's completely off hands. So whether you do that by handing it to the spectator and getting them to put it behind their back, or you do it by like Ryan did doing it underneath the table, you do need to make sure that, uh, that, 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 that you're, you're in that sort of situation. Um, it is probably best if you use a table, to be perfectly honest, but the walk around handling does work. Outside of that, that's the only environmental restriction that you guys need to be aware of. Outside of that, it's a very commercial routine. Um, you can go into it at any point in your act that you want to. You've been using a deck of cards, They've been shuffling the cards. They've been doing whatever. Anytime you want to go into this, you can. I love the idea of bringing out the post-it notes and you have that amazing revelation of the card appearing right there. They turn any card over, you spread through. And again, you don't need to spread through on the table. You can spread through in your hands, but showing that there's only one card that's turned over and it's the card that you actually named, that's an absolute mind-blowing thing for the, for the audience, isn't it? But then you've got that next phase where the card next to it that they decide on ends up being the actual card that's the arrow card that's on the other side of the post-it notes. It's really well thought through. Could I think of ways of doing this without using a gimmick deck of cards? Because you're getting a full gimmick deck of cards here. Could I think of ways of doing this without using a gimmick deck of cards? Yes. I can think of about five or six different ways of doing this without actually using a special deck of cards. Would it be as clean? Would it be as good? No. And I think that's the important thing here. You could, you could probably replicate this, but there's no way you're gonna be able to do it as clean as this without using a special deck of cards. What do you think of this? You've I spent the time learning good. it. You like it? Yes. Uh, can you think of any downsides? No. Any problems? I can't really, other than having to either use a table or put the deck behind your back, I can't really see a problem with this. I mean, it's really you strong. You don't have to use a table. No. You can, you, look. As you can do like, if you want to know a waterfall shuffle, there's, you can do that in the air. And when you're spreading it out, you can just spread it in your hand. Yeah, yeah exactly. You don't have to do a table. Yeah, that's true. You can do it walk around. Um, walk around, close up, parlour. This would make a great closer to an act as well. Yeah. Because it's completely impossible. You couldn't get stronger than this. So yeah, I, uh, I love it. I think it's really good. It's another hit by Penguin. Uh, I'm going to give this 90% and say that this is uh, an incredible trick. 90%. Really good. If you liked Ryland's performance, there are no surprises. What you saw is absolutely possible. Not a problem at all. So yeah, 90%, really like it. What are you giving it? I'm going to give this 100%. 100% from Ryland, 90% from me. Well done, Dan Harlan. Well done, Penguin Magic. You can get it directly from Penguin Magic in P3. Uh, and you'll, you'll literally... You picked this up within half an hour of learning it, didn't you? Like within half an hour, he was performing it brilliantly. It's a, it's a very easy trick to add straight into your act. So the final trick today, we have the self-exploding glass by Wance. Uh, it says Wance there, self-exploding glass. Uh, and you can get this in a whole bunch of different designs. The tutorial for this, this is about... Is you love this, don't you? Um, the tutorial is only about only four or five is, minutes long. You might cut your finger like you did. I did cut my finger, yeah. Just cleaning up afterwards. You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, what you have here, this is basically... Yeah, I, these have been around for a long while. Uh, this, this is not new. Uh, I, it's, it's been on the market for a while. Prop Dog used to sell these. I think it's called a begonia or a 
bottle I, I can't remember this has been around for a while what it is basically is it's a bottle or a glass they've, they've produced lots of different versions so there's a, a tankard there's a glass there's a wine glass there's a bottle but the whole oh, idea of the this picture, there's like a big <coughs> yeah they call it a tankard and the whole idea is that you can have this examine, they can check it out, they can have a look it's at it. It's actually been strengthened <coughs> on the outside. Yeah, you don't want to tell them exactly what's going on here, but it's been strengthened it has been strengthened. So you can hit this. I mean, it looks like a normal bottle. And then all you do is you hold it, you focus your attention, and when you do, this bottle will smash into smithereens. You let, you let your anger out on this. I let my anger out on it. In fact, we filmed a performance earlier on. Uh, I sent Ryland behind the camera. Purely because I didn't want to have glass all over you, your mom would have killed me. So uh, I'm going to roll that performance now so you can see exactly what this looks like. And then when I've rolled the performance, we'll talk about what we think. Okay, so I've got a Coca-Cola bottle here. Ryland has examined this before we began, didn't you, Ryan? Yeah. I'm going to hold this very, very carefully because I'm going to try and show you something with the power of my mind. Watch, all I have to do is concentrate, focus my anger towards this bottle. And right now I have a lot of anger. And I can actually make the whole thing smash into a million pieces. So there you go. That is the trick. And uh, you know what? I mean, it's, it is it is as good as it looks. It's very well made. Uh, let's talk about the negatives first of all. The obvious negatives are there are only certain places you can do this. You can't go there to your local restaurants or a residency and do this and have glass smash all over the place. Uh, I mean, this is the sort of thing you would see a street magician do. Uh, like, you know, you, I could see somebody like David Blaine or Dynamo picking up a bottle of somebody's table and like just literally smashing it with the power of their mind. I'm sure this has been done on TV shows before. Um, but you need to be careful with the glass going everywhere. Uh, this is perfect for a stage performance as a demonstration of mind power. Uh, they do sell, uh, the company that makes these do sell uh, this special self-exploding box, which is kind of like a, uh, a sort of see-through box with an open top. So you can put it in there and you can do it there and it completely keeps the, uh, the glass inside the box and then you can just move the box away. So if you're performing this on stage, for example, you can have the box and you can take the, uh, the, the bottle, have it examined, put it in there concentrate and have it smash and the glass won't go everywhere which is quite nice i think the best place to use this is either for a stage show or maybe for a close-up promo i mean for a, if you're a close-up magician and you want to have a really awesome moment i think you could probably do this at a at an event or a garden party but you'd have to kind of prep people beforehand you wouldn't want to just go to a gig and do this and glass end up everywhere it just the venue would be really annoyed uh, you know, I think that you might annoy a few clients as well. But if you kind of engineered this and you said, hey, it's going to get a little whatever. And you got I think this will get a great reaction from lay people. So you can do this and you can get that awesome reaction for your show reel. But I don't think you'd want to do it in a gig in a close up gig normally unless it's, you know, maybe. But I, I don't know. I mean, the, the problem is it is going to be very messy and very dangerous, especially if you're doing like a wedding and there's kids there. Um, is there anything else to say about it? I mean, obviously, you're going to destroy a bottle every time you do it. You buy it to do it once. So, you know, I didn't practice that. I just did it because, obviously, you practice it. You're going to end up getting rid of another bottle, which is no good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what do you think of it? I mean, I've just been blabbering I think, on. I think this is very good. You love it, don't you? Yeah, you I'm love giving it. this 119. 119%. This is my second favourite trick. He's his second favourite trick, yeah. I mean, I really like it. Latex Cube is trick of the week for me. Um, second trick of the week is this. If I was a TikTok magician, and you, see, you see those TikTok magicians where they go, rate the magic trick. Um, it's kind of like, rate the magic trick, boom, 10 out of 10. I think it would be absolutely worth if it. If I could do this, do I deserve a follow? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Joel, Dan, uh, James, all of you guys. Uh, you want to jump on this in a heartbeat because I think this would look absolutely incredible for you guys. Um, and I think, you know, you could do this in TikTok. TikTok's the perfect example of what I meant of having a controlled environment. You know, like you do it and, you know, it's all being sort of set up specifically for that shot. This would be absolutely perfect. I could see you, I could see a TikTok magician kind of setting this up a little bit like, uh, uh, you know, like their friend is sitting there drinking a Coke 
um, or they've poured a Coke and there's an empty glass there, or they've got a glass and they go to pick up the glass and, and you know, they smash it with the power of the mind. There's a lot of different presentational opportunities with this for a YouTube shorts magician or a TikTok magician, but it's also applicable in the real world. It will work really well in the real world as well. Just be aware of the limitations. Uh, I'm going to give this 90%. I think it's really good. I am going to use it. I'm definitely going to put this in my show reel. I'll probably do this on a shorts. We'll probably get you to do this and very carefully. We'll very carefully get you to do this on your Instagram. I know you're desperate to do it. Uh, we'll have to figure out a way of doing it so that I know for sure you're not going to get injured. Uh, but I'm going to give it 19%. You're giving it 119%. It's really I'll good. I'll wear five layers of coats. You'll wear five layers of coats. We'll get you in a hazmat suit. We'll get you in a full-on mask and gloves and a, like a gas mask. And you'll be there and you, you can smash it up and then you can take your mask off and go, I'm Ryan, the kid magician. <laughs> uh, so yeah, 119% from Ryan, 90% from me. And that's an overview show. In the back, that's an overview show. In the back, that's an overview show. In the back. Two weeks in a row, we've had no terrible tricks. What's going on? I don't know what's going on, right? Looks like 2022 no is going to be a no, no, hammers, no, no, no scissors, bits, no hammers. No I, think, I think 2022 has been a really good year for magic. Let's hope it continues, guys. Do me a favor, let me know what you think in the comments down below. We live on you your. Say on his trailer. Yeah, we live in your comments. We really, really, really want to know what you think. So let us know in the comments down below. Uh, also, don't forget if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment down below, and please follow Ryland on Instagram. Uh, you got almost 200 followers on Instagram, which considering you only set your channel up about a month ago. 159, yeah, almost 200. And uh, uh, and you got over 500 subs on YouTube, man. It's really going well for you. So make sure you follow this guy on YouTube and Instagram. Don't forget, we'll be back next Wednesday with another review show, Craig and Riley's review show, here every Wednesday at 5 o'clock. We do not miss a week. And I will be back tomorrow at 9 o'clock with Magic Stuff, 2 o'clock with the short, 6 o'clock with Magic Live. I'll see you again. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ray. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.